What's going on everybody? Welcome to Squatch Bikes. I'm James. This is Pat. And over the past year, we have had a lot of new people join the community of mountain biking. With that, we've had a lot of questions on what type of bike to get, what do they need, what don't they need. So what we thought we would do today is start a series on mountain bikes. And today we're going to start with the very basics of the frames themselves. Rigid, hardtail, and full suspension. Roll that into it. Welcome to Squatch Bikes. So Pat, I'm new to mountain biking. Okay. And my friends are telling me about all these different bikes. One of my buddies is telling me about a rigid bike. What is a what is that? What does that mean? A friend that's telling you to buy a rigid bike. Y yeah, is that good? Uh, for some people, okay. uh, but a rigid bike is a bike with no suspension. So that means that it has a fully solid fork and a fully solid frame. It's a bike that really requires the most amount of skill and effort from you as the rider. It's not going to give anything back to you. It's the least comfortable, is the least capable naturally. Uh, and it's really meant for a pretty small group of hardcore-ish type riders. Okay, so no comfort, it's probably require comfort. a little bit more skill if I'm getting off-road, truly off-road. Yeah, especially as a beginner rider, that can be a really hard way to say like, I wonder what mountains biking is like. I feel every bump, every route, every weird movement in the trail, it just doesn't help out that much. So, Ridges doesn't sound like that's for me. I want something not. that's going to be probably a little bit more aggressive on the trail. Okay. Uh, kind of getting into that off-road, what would be my next step? So the next step in the lineup would be the hardtail mountain bike. Uh, it's a great thing, so it still keeps that solid frame, but we add the suspension fork on the front. It's going to add a nice degree of comfort, stability, and tunability, depending on kind of the level of bike you go with. They're really happy on flowier or smoother trails, but you know, I love riding my hardtail everywhere on the rough stuff. It, it, it all is depending on the rider themselves. The hardtails are definitely not pigeonholed into like just easier beginner trails. They're awesome mountain bikes. They're fun to ride, they're nimble, but they're still gonna give you quite a bit of feedback off the trail. So if I want a little less feedback, where does that take us? So that takes you to the next bike, which is the full suspension bike. So for a full suspension bike, what advantage is that going to give to me as a newer rider? So the newer rider is just going to have composure and comfort right off the bat. Mountain biking is hard, um, and when the bike can give you more than you have to give it, it can just make it more fun off the bat. Mountain biking is supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to be hard. That's why we don't all ride rigid bikes anymore. They're really hard to ride. That full suspension bike, it's going to make those small roots, those rocks, the holes in the trail just kind of start to disappear so you can focus on what's ahead of you, not what's underneath you directly. Okay, that sounds great. Yeah, they're a lot of fun. So you've been, you're actually not a beginner rider. You've been riding for quite some years. You must have seen the change of the bikes over the years. Where, when did you start? So it was back in like 92-ish. I wasn't even born. No. Back then, our trails were really tight. We had no idea what we were doing. Sure. I mean. <laughs> We were out there just scratching in trails with shovels and rakes. And Did you even wear a helmet? No. Oh. I wore my hat on backwards. Close enough. Yeah. So you said 92, 93-ish time, hardtails are transferring into full suspension bikes. What do you start on? Uh, my first full suspension bike was the one that's actually hanging up in the corner of the shop. The ProFlex up there. The ProFlex Animal. Ooh. And I remember people thinking that I was crazy that I had this two and a half or three inches of travel well, with enough. elastomers. <laughs> it wasn't enough travel? No, it was too much. That, like, that thing was a downhill bike back then. So from today's perspective of running 160, 170 bikes as a normal rider, you're telling me that when you started, two inches was too much? Well, I mean, just to give you a really, really good understanding of you know, what that meant mm -hmm. back then. Um, I'm actually going to have John right now bring something over for you um, okay. that you're gonna ride so that you get that perspective. Did, did, and, you, did um, you buy me something? Oh no. Yeah, so we're gonna bring something in here <laughs> because I want you to understand, because you weren't even born yet, and I want you to understand exactly um, what it was like back I then. I see. 26 inch fire 
XC Pros, and yeah. I see XTR pivotal brakes. Yeah, this isn't good. Parallel pivot brakes, oh no. So let's go ahead and pull this thing out real quick. Is the wheel. This what is this is roughly a 1995-1996 Schwinn full suspension home grown. Full suspension home grown. I thought home grown were hardtails. Nope. So they did make a full suspension version. Uh, the unified rear triangle, kind of original design from them, or one of them. Um, so um, how does the axle move when you ride it? Well, this is an interesting bike, uh, and this is, you know, very much the thoughts back then in that the suspension only worked when you were sitting in the saddle. Why would you do that? I, I don't know. That's so you're telling me that... It was, a, it was a terrible idea. It didn't work. Ibis tried it. Uh, we have one of those frames hanging up oh, here in the Sasbo? shop. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you're going to get to experience that and you won't have to ask me tons of questions about what it was like riding in 1995. So I guess I'll just find out then? You're going to find out the hard way. I'm afraid. Well, it's, uh, it's our special projects bike. Okay. So we're going to get that together and that's going to be for a whole other series of videos. Oh dear. Well, back to it, huh? So, bikes have changed, but trails have also changed, right? Yeah. So, 92 to 2021, what have you noticed? The trails have gotten flowier, and by flowier, I mean uh, you can see further down the trails for sure. Okay. Um, Pisgah is kind of an anomaly because you have these very old hiking trails sure. that have been opened up to us that are kind of like fall lines, um, that are very rough and raw okay um but really back then we were what we were building we didn't understand like water and pitch to trails like sustainable trails there was no such thing so they probably came and went pretty quickly very quick sure. um i remember starting to build some trails uh, and helping some friends out that were trying to build a system of trails up in ohio and bringing equipment in and we had, we just had no clue but the trails were rough they were rowdy really for what we were building uh, as far as the bikes went and today they have all these different levels of trail and you can have a beginner rider come up into the mountains and have a really fantastic time on like a flow trail um, and learn a lot yeah. and but then you can still have a, a seasoned pro ride that same trail and have a really sick time just shredding right it's down. fun for yeah. everybody. Yeah. Hey, when I started, there was always an option for, at the very least, a skills park. Somewhere that someone who's just starting to learn how to ride can go practice some stuff before they go into the harder stuff. And, and we never had that. Sure. And, which is awesome. I love seeing that. So the trails have changed, and I, I know the bikes have changed. What, what have you noticed over your time riding? Uh, the the bikes, bikes have gotten bigger, longer, slacker. The brakes are a huge portion of it. The suspension, tire size, I mean, just so, so many of the specs basically have really changed, but the confidence of the bike yeah. is, is, and I think that comes with lower, longer slacker. I mean, I know that even over my 10 or 12 years of riding, my stuff breaks a whole lot less. Everything just yeah. lasts and works better. I think, honestly, as, especially as a mechanic, they're easier to service, they're easier for people to learn about. There's so much more content out there for everybody. Yeah, the, the bikes have changed, and today, for people getting into it, uh, it I mean, I just look at them like, man, it's so much better for so you. So lucky we, to start well, nowadays. You know, in the 90s, we were like, what is mountain biking? And today, we're like, this is mountain biking. And now we're actually diving into the technology. We're, we're taking something that's really good, uh, we're taking amazing bikes and we're just tweaking them and tweaking them and tweaking them. Refine them yeah. rather than like large leaps forward. Mm -hmm. That's the conclusion for today's video. I hope you learned something about rigid frames, hardtail frames, and full suspension. Next time we're going to go over the styles of riding. Is it going to be trail riding, downhill riding, XC riding, 
we're going to help you guide you on your way. Until then, if you're in the Brevard area, come ride with us.